Hallo zusammen! Many modern vehicles, their technical engineering and well-known car brands have their origin in Germany. And besides that, the car and related engineering industry is one of the most important and strongest in Germany. And believe me when I say there are many different things that could be said about cars and other vehicles in Germany. So let's learn about 5 statistical and historic facts about driving in Deutschland today. Number 1. Die Anschnallpflicht. This one is a very specific term related to driving vehicles in Germany. Instead of die Anschnallpflicht, Germans might also refer to this by using the term die Gurtpflicht. Die Anschnallpflicht means belt on obligation and die Gurtpflicht translates to seat belt obligation. Both basically mean the same. Up until 1976 there was no Gurtpflicht in Germany. And in fact many oldtimers, which is a German English term for old cars by the way, often didn't even feature a seat belt at all. There are only a few specific situations in which it's not mandatory to use seat belts in vehicles in Germany. So generally speaking it's not only important, but also mandatory for ordinary drivers. The general Bußgeld, the monetary fine for not using seat belts is 30 euros. And if you don't drive your kids with any form of protection, the fine is up to 60 euros, respectively 70 euros for more than one kid. In addition to the 60 euros, drivers also receive a point in Flensburg. And no, that is nothing positive. The German Kraftfahrt Bundesamt is located in Flensburg. And every German driver knows what you mean when you say Punkte in Flensburg, points in Flensburg. We have a point-based penalty system regarding certain neglected driving or traffic rules in Germany. Depending on the total amount of points you have for neglecting or not following certain various rules, you might also need to hand out your driver's license, your Führerschein. So best be careful. According to the online version of the infamous German Bußgeld catalog, the schedule of fines, in 2014, every fifth driver who got killed in a car accident hadn't used a seatbelt. Number 2. Straßen. Germany not only has a well-established freeway system, no, there are also many streets here. In total there are more than 231,000 kilometers of streets in Germany. This figure includes federal streets, federal freeways, which is die Autobahn, country roads, take me home, uh, and district roads. And when you also consider rural roads in addition, it's more than 413,000 kilometers in total. To put this a little bit into perspective, the Earth's equatorial outline is about 40,000 kilometers long. If you only take a look at the Autobahn, the German freeway system, it's more than 13,000 kilometers long, which makes it the fourth longest freeway system in the world, as of 2018 that is. Number 3. Der Rechtsverkehr. In Germany cars drive on the right lane. We refer to this as der Rechtsverkehr, the right hand driving, or traffic. As far as I know, this has been the case ever since the end of the Napoleon Wars in 1815, when Napoleon actually decided to have right hand traffic in all defeated European countries. Right hand driving in Germany also means that cars also feature das Lenkrad, the steering wheel on the left side. If you want to learn more about typical traffic rules and road signs in Germany, or specifically on the Autobahn, check out my video, respectively my playlists at the end of this video. There are plenty of theories as to where the origins of left hand, respectively right hand traffic lie, and many are also specific to certain regions or countries. In France for instance, Robespierre decided to have right hand traffic back in the day. Whereas in Japan, a probable reason for having left-hand traffic is that when they established their tracks, meaning train track system, they were mainly supported by British engineers. Ha! <laughs> the Brits. Another probable reason for driving on the right lane is that A. Most people are right-handed and B. Back in the day, soldiers and knights defended themselves with a sword in their right hand, while they held the horse's rein in their left hand. And in order to grab the sword, which was hanging on the left side, you needed to use the right hand. And this is probably another reason why the aforementioned Robespierre decided in favor of the right-hand traffic. Number 4. Autos. 
When you keep in mind that Germany has a population of around 82 million people as of 2018, it's crazy to find out that there are almost 64 million licensed vehicles in Germany. This number includes cars, motorcycles and other vehicles. If you only count cars, there are 46.5 million licensed ones in Deutschland, by the way. So that's the vast majority. Most of all these vehicles were manufactured by VW, VW, followed by Opel, Opel, and Mercedes, Mercedes. And last but not least, number 5. Fahrräder. Of course, the phrase driving in Germany is not just limited to motorized vehicles. And actually, there seem to be more unmotorized vehicles in Germany than motorized ones. In 2017, there were over 73.5 million Fahrräder in Germany. It's das Fahrrad, singular, die Fahrräder, plural, the bicycle. There are also certain regions that are known for a particularly high amount of bicycles compared to other vehicles. For instance, the town Münster in North Rhine-Westphalia. And there are even a few places in Germany without cars. For instance, German islands such as Jüst or Borkum are officially autofrei, meaning car-free zones. Which means you're supposed to explore the islands on foot or with a bicycle, with a Fahrrad. You can find a list with all resources I've used for this video in the video description. I wonder which of these facts did you know already and which ones were surprising to you? Tell me in the comments and thanks for watching. I'm your Vlog Dave. Tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal.